I'm Dave, this is the Cider Baby Show, and I am talking to Simon McBride. Hi. Hello, how's it going? Oh, I'm not so bad. Yourself? Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. I'm cold, but I'm good. You're you know, cold? Like, Put a jumper on, man. <laughs> I know. I shouldn't have. My, I have this theory. Of, I'm in my own house or studio. I shouldn't have to put my jumper on. But <laughs> you know, it's, uh, no, because we have that that storm at the minute. Everything's freezing and the weather's. The temperature is it's getting worse. But yeah, I don't know why I'm moaning. I'm not, I still need to start it, and I'm moaning already. <laughs> <laughs> you got an impressive array of guitars behind you there, sir. Yeah, that's some of them. I have have some more in cases and stuff and in storage too. So yeah, I have too many guitars, too many amps, too many pedals, too many of too much gear. So <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, right, you've got a new album coming out and a tour very shortly. Shall we start with that? Yeah. So um, the tour, I think that's in March. Yeah. Yes, that's in March. It's uh, it's not it's not a very long tour. I'm playing various places over the UK and Ireland. Uh, I think I'm playing Norwich, London, Edinburgh, Blackpool, somewhere in Wales, uh, Leicester, I think, and then Bradford, Stoke, and yeah, and then Ireland. I'm playing. Where am I playing? Drogheda, Londonderry, Belfast, and Dublin. I'm very I'm very actually quite proud of myself that I actually remembered all those. <laughs> <laughs> being cold must be jogging the memory um yeah. yeah so this is in support of a new album yeah yeah well the, the album's actually it's coming out in may but this was kind of uh put in very soon because you know this year has been uh everybody's trying to get out and tour yeah. because they've been sitting on their asses for the last two year, two and a half years or whatnot so there's very limited space available for in, in venues to to you know get out there you know or and there's very little venues left. <laughs> yeah, that, that is true. You know, so I decided just to do it, just to, you know, to get out there and, and just try and get back to some sort of sense of normality when it comes to playing, you know. Plus, we haven't played in two and a half years, so we're itching. We've had a few teasers, you know, la the end of last year, we did a couple of festivals and stuff, but yeah, just had a, uh, you know, so we got that, that bug, that drug again or whatever, you know, to, to get out and play and uh, we're all very fired up and very excited to do it and you know so it's a, it's gonna it's gonna be fun good um what sort of music to, to somebody who's never heard of you before which there may be one or two what sort of music are you playing is it blues based rocks it's mostly just rock stuff rock uh, with catchy choruses that kind of thing yeah uh, there's, the element, there's an element of blues in there but you know, if you play rock there's always going to be an element of blues of something in there because that's that's where rock comes from basically um <laughs> But yeah, it's a three-piece band. Um, yeah, my stuff is from the new album. Uh, uh, I have a single out called "The Fighter," and mm -hmm. it's kind of a you know typical kind of hard rock kind of thing with catchy vocals and and, and, and melodies and stuff going on in there, and it's lots of backing vocals. It's kind of you know, it's kind of a little bit like I don't know, the eighties meets current now. You know what I mean? So yeah, yeah. Um, because that's just me. That's what I, I grew up in the eighties. So that's the kind of thing I, I like to play and listen to. So yeah. So how how did you get to this point? What what started it all off for you, band wise? Uh, like from the very start, like from where I started completely in the guitar. Is that what you? Go mean? on then. Yeah, yeah. Let's go from the beginning. Uh, sure. Well, I'll I'll try and keep it short because it's a long journey. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I started guitar when I was about nine or ten. Uh, I was kind of a very fast learner. Mm. Um, I was doing TV shows and stuff by the age of 13 or 14, playing, you know, various Joe Satriani songs and Van Halen and whatnot. And then I won UK Guitarist when I was, UK, UK Guitarist of the Year when I was 15. Um, that's a long time ago now. And then uh, sure I went on to join a band called Sweet Savage, which were kind of this heavy metal band, which, you know, their previous guitar player was a guy called Vivian Campbell. Yeah. Um, so I did that for a while, and then I... Went and joined uh, uh, a guy called Andrew Strong. Andrew was a yeah. singer in a movie called The Commitments from years ago. And, yeah, um, I know. I toured for, I don't know, off and on for about six years with him. And then what else have I done? Uh, I've played for various things, session stuff over the years. and then, But I, I do a lot of stuff with Don Airy from Deep Purple. And I yeah. do a lot of stuff with Ian Gillen from Deep Purple as well. Um uh, what else have I done? Uh, I played for a band, like a super group called Snake Charmer, which kind of featured uh, um, Harry James from Thunder and drums, yep. Adam Hickman and 
uh, Larry Westfield, Dean Murray, and you know, and stuff like that. Yeah. Did, I did an album with those guys, did some touring with those guys, and now I'm just doing my own thing at the minute, you know. So uh, that's 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 my life in in the space of I don't know two minutes. <laughs> <laughs> so is this your first solo album, as it were? I've had solo records out in the past, but yeah. they, they it was a long time ago. Um, they were kind of those albums were kind of more in the bluesier rock thing, but this is more mm. kind of me now and what I do. Like it's been it's been about ten I don't know ten years since my last album came out, so it's kind of more you know what I do now is completely different to what I did then. So it's just this is it's so it's sort of like a, a debut album if you want to call it. You know, it's 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 the new <laughs> me. Really, so, uh, All right. So, uh, what would we expect from this sort of album? How many tracks? You know, what are your inspirations for writing this? Uh, that sort of thing. Uh, well, this album is, as I said, you know, it's a, you know, it's it, a lot of it's quite like my single, which is out. It's called "The Fighter." Yeah. Um, so it's kind of rock stuff. It's all I wrote a lot of the songs with the songwriters. Um, I say songwriters are just they're, they're friends of mine, but. One of them in particular is a just a singer songwriter, and he doesn't care about the guitar at all. He just cares about the song. So, which was my idea for this album. I wanted the songs to be great on it. Um, I didn't want them to just to be guitar songs mm. with throwaway kind of lyrics and throwaway vocal melodies and stuff. So, the whole vocal aspect of it was a big important thing for me. Um, yeah, so I did it with various song or various other writers as well. So, um, I'm proud of it. It's you know it's a uh, it's it's probably some of my best stuff so far. I think you know, um, in my in my own opinion. And I hope everybody else thinks the same <laughs> when they hear it. <laughs> Why not? You never know. But um, but yeah, I'm very proud of it. It's coming out, you know, and uh, I'm curious to see and hear what people think about it and what their thoughts are on it. So excellent, excellent. Um, so uh, if you would, uh, I mean, I'm trying to glean some information from you about the tracks itself. If you were to say one track that defines that album, which track would you pick? Uh, I don't really know. There's so many of them. Uh, like the <laughs> fighter, you know, the f fighter gives you an idea of what you're going to get. You're going to get, uh, you know, that kind of uh, uh, big guitar riffs, yeah. catchy courses, different sounds and stuff. And that's mostly the album. Like the next single that's coming out is pretty. It's something similar. Big hooky choruses, big guitar signs, and you know, um, um, guitar solos, obviously. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, it, it's they all kind of. It's all very cohesive. The album, all the songs, they all work together. So um, there is a couple of tracks which throw you a little bit left field. There's a track called Trouble, which is a bit more R and B soul kind of a vibe to it. You know, it, the album is just whatever I wanted to do because over the years I've been put in, put in so many brackets of whatever. It's blues, mm. rock, blues, guitars, rock, whatever. I just, it, for me, the minute I'm just like, I just want to play what I want to play. You know, because I firmly believe if, you, if you're going to, you know, pave your own way in the music industry and be your own identity, mm. you have to do what you want to do or whatever is you, you know, inside. Because if you try to go down a certain route of, say, I want to be this sort of guitarist or I want to be this sort of songwriter, you never really truly master it. So the only way, the only thing you can really truly master is your inner, your inner uh, creativity, really, which whatever you know is you, and that's and that's what I'm doing in this album. And you know, so people say to me, you know, about you know the track trouble is a bit different to the rest. And I went, I don't care. It's a good track. I like it. And, <laughs> you know, it's uh, so it's a slightly it gives people a little bit of a, a difference. You know. Because you think of some of the great bands over the years, for I don't know, you look at like a Queen, like Queen mm. did so many different things, or the Beatles. Be Beatles wrote you a pop song, they wrote you, you know, uh, maybe a, a, a blues rock thing, or they you know, some sort of orchestrated thing as well. So, you know, so many different different things you can do. It's just, it's just about not being afraid to take a risk a little bit. So, and um, but yeah. That's probably a bit more than you were expecting for that answer. No, that's perfect. That's absolutely spot on. Um, so it gives me an idea of what to expect live, because I assume you'll be playing quite a bit from the album. Yeah, I'll probably play everything off the album, because I'm, I'm fed up playing old stuff, so I don't want to play any <laughs> new stuff. I play new stuff you know, so. <laughs> okay. Um, so if you were to pull something from the past, then, what would you pick? Well, we do 
do a few songs from the old old uh, uh, sets that we've done in the past. You know, mm. I've, uh, as I said, I've a. Uh, I have a couple of songs in my, in my last record I did about 10 years ago. Um, there's a track called Don't Be a Fool and, and, and One More Try, which are very popular. You know, Don't Be a Fool has like, I don't know, five and a half million plays or something on Spotify or something stupid like that. Um, and then One More Try, I, I have no idea what that has. You know, so I play stuff like that, just ones that people like and stuff. And then I, I sometimes do the odd cover now and again. Um uh, like on my new album, there's actually an old free song called The Steeler. So it's yeah. my interpretation of it. I've changed the whole thing a bit. And um, so we do that live anyway. And then sometimes I throw in a, the odd Hendrix thing just because people like Hendrix. And then, you know, well, yeah. no, what's, not, what's not to like about Hendrix? So, um, so yeah, I always do a song to finish off with the, the gig. Generally, it's a track called Power of Soul, which I've kind of made it into my own kind of thing over the last 10 years. You know, uh, uh, it's... It's off the band the Gypsy album, band the Gypsies album, sorry. Yeah. And, um, so I do that, and you know, just a few other things, but mostly all my own stuff and and a few from the old times and the, the odd cover. But if I do covers, I do them in my own way. I don't just do direct copies, you know. I'm just like, mm. yeah, you know, I, I, I just like to change things up a bit, you know. For, and I only do them if I feel they're they're good enough, you know, um, or or I can do a good enough version of them, should I say. Okay, um, so we'll backtrack a bit. I mean, you, you name-dropped some very big names like Don Airy and Ian Gillen and uh, Snake Charmer, which I was quite aware uh, aware of. Um, what did you work on in relation to those albums? I mean, I assume you were the guitarist, obviously, but um, which albums were you working on with those guys? Uh, well, Don Airy, I've done, I've done one... I've done one full album with Dawn, yeah, and half an album before that with Dawn, and then we we there's a new album coming out from Dawn Airy this year, which is all me and and Dawn. Uh, with Dawn, it's been a gradual sort of uh, relationship. I've known Dawn for a long time now, um, and yeah, it's really just the last album was basically because he always wanted to have this sort of band thing, even though it was Dawn Airy's name, but he wanted mm. a band, so. It was generally myself and Don and, uh, you know, sometimes Carl, the singer, would get together in, in the room. We'd write all the songs together. But most of the time, it was just Don and myself. We'd write everything. Um, so that was the, the last couple of records we did. We we, we, we yeah. got together a lot of stuff and then we recorded it. So, yeah, it's with Don, it's like it's 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 his solo stuff, but it's 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 a band sort of project in a way. Um, yeah, that's the way he wants it. Uh, with Ian Gillen, I did uh, uh, a few live albums. With Ian, we did a tour of Eastern Europe. Oh, it's it's, it's uh, was it 2016 now? Long time ago, you know. Uh, <laughs> well, not that long time ago. It only feels like it was two years ago or something. A year ago. Yeah. But COVID, COVID's made everything feel. But um, yeah, there was three or four live albums released from that from their various shows of 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 that that tour. Um, it was a great gig. Or, sorry, great gigs, great tour, you know, Ian's a great guy. Um, so, yeah, what, that was mostly all just, it was the Don Airy band, basically, with, with mm. Gillen singing, and then it was all done with an orchestra as well, like a, a symphony orchestra in each each country that we went to. Yeah. Um, and then there was a Blu-ray released of it, too, of, um, I think that was done in the, the Kremlin in Moscow, that one. So it was kind of, it was very cool. Uh, so, yeah, um who else? Snake Charmer. Yes, I've done did, did the album Snake Charmer was their last album we did. Yeah. Um, I played most. I, well, I did lots. I played all, all all guitars, not all guitars, but it was shared between me and my and Laurie Weisfield. Mm. Um, the songs were mostly they were mostly written before I joined the band. To be honest, okay. All those songs on, uh, I wrote a few. Um, I can't even remember the names now, but you know, there's a few on the album I wrote. But yeah, yeah, there's a great band too, you know, great guys, and you know, it's uh, it's all, you know, it's all fun to do, you know. So I've I've, yeah. I've been around. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but nothing beats your own stuff, yeah. Yeah, playing your own stuff is always always good. I like playing other people's stuff too, but you know, playing your own stuff is a different thing. It's a different ball game. Um, you know, you've more. I've, more control i would say because i'm the boss and i i do what i want to do you know and that's it where sometimes when you play for another artist you know and even though how 
even though they are um, very open to suggestions and stuff like that, you still always got to remember it's their it's their baby, and you yeah. know, and they have final say at the end of the day. So, um, but yeah, doing your own thing is 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 you know the buck stops with me basically, which is good, you know, because I have artistic control really, and like I I'm like I'm uh, I'm the sort of person I'm totally open I'm open to other uh, ideas and input from other people, whether it's producers or engineers, if it's better for the song then I'm totally good for it, you know? If it doesn't yeah. work, and it's just somebody putting an idea in because they want to get their two cents in, it's like, I won't go for it. But, um, so I'm, yeah, I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm easy going that way, you know? I'm just like, yeah, this works, great. I don't care, <laughs> you know? So, <laughs> as I said, it's all about the song. That's the most important thing to me. I don't care who wrote it. It's, it's, it's just about the song and that sort of thing, so. One final question before we go. Yes. If you were to look back and say who and all the different people that you've uh, listened to over the decades, who would have been your biggest inspiration? Uh, my biggest inspiration, and uh, well, it's guitar, guitar player wise, I can't really say one. I'd have to say there's two because they both have. There's two: is Gary Moore, yeah, obviously, and uh, Steve Lugather from Toto. You know, uh, from. Uh, it's the only way I can describe my plan is a combination of between Steve Lugather and, and Gary Moore because that's they're the my two bigs. Like I've had lots of influences over the years, like in the eighties had Satriani and Vi and you know Paul Gilbert and all these guys. But what I really uh, uh, class is me is a combination somewhere in the middle of those two. I hope, <laughs> you know. <laughs> uh, I don't know. It's it's at the end of the day. I sound like me no matter what I do, you know. And uh, uh, but yeah, those two would be my biggest inspiration i would say for on in, in regards to guitar okay simon mcbride thank you very much for your time and i hope to see you on tour very soon yeah thank, cheers for having thank me thank you very much <laughs>